heavy duty, powerful, and made to last. The Transporter Platform Hoist will make your next roofing job faster, easier, and safer. It's ideal for lifting shingles, solar panels, roofing felt, insulation, lumber, and other building materials. The Transporter Platform Hoist is shipped in three boxes and one track section bundle. The collapsible carriage comes with cam bearing track engagement system for better tracking and handling. Also features an aluminum deck and flap for lighter weight and longer life. A rolled goods plywood bracket comes with unit and pins into carriage. Each model comes with three eight foot track sections and one four foot base section for a total overall height of 28 feet. For heavier roofing materials, the TP400 is available. Both transporter models may be purchased with either a Honda, Lifen, or Leeson electric engine. Transporter also offers optional accessories sold separately. First, assemble the carriage by following the assembly instructions included. Remove the base section from its box and place on a clean floor or assembly area. Remove the top cap with a 9 16 inch wrench. There is one bolt nut combo on each side. Starting at the top of the track section, slide carriage assembly onto the track so that the four rollers connect to the top rail of the track section. Roll the carriage assembly onto the base. At this time, lock the base in place using the safety pin. Lay one track on a flat floor with the front side up. Attach splice plates to the bottom section of the track. Splice plates are mounted on the outside track section. Slide the top section track into the grooves on the inside track and attach with two nuts and bolts per side. Reattach the top cap to the end of the last section of track section you intend to use. Assemble with the two carriage bolts with keeper nuts provided. Make sure the top cap end slides into the outside of the track section. Turn the hoist on its side and working from the back, remove the end of the cable from the drum. Feed the cable end through the pulley as shown above and down the front side of the track section to the back of the carriage assembly. Attach cable to the carriage assembly, pass bolt through lock washer, washer and cable I end. Tighten bolt. Raising the hoist requires three contractors. Look above you, to the left, and right, and all around to locate and identify any and all power lines before lifting. When raising the hoist, keep track sections clear of all electrical wires and equipment, and be aware of overhead objects. Lay the platform hoist on the ground near the building wall. Tie rope to the top cap. Have one contractor pull the rope from the roof while another raises the base shoes from slipping. The third walks the hoist up hand over hand by the track runs. When the hoist reaches a vertical position, carefully rotate the unit 90 degrees and move the bottom of the base unit away from the building by a quarter of the height of the building. Secure track sections to the roof but do not use rope or any other object that may interfere with the platform or carriage. The best option is to use the transporter stabilizer. The standoff allows for proper mounting to the eave of the roof and prevents costly damage to the gutters. Next, attach the engine assembly to the base unit while the engine is off. Mount the motor assembly to the base unit from behind the hoist. The foot pad of the motor base slides under the track base section while hanging the motor base. The motor assembly arms must fit outside the two retainer rings. Before starting the engine, align the V belt to the large pulley on the base. Then slide the belt under the belt guard long ways to the motor base. Slide the brake handle over the brake arm and tighten the thumb screw provided. Brake handle can be placed on either side of the hoist. Prior to starting the engine, check all oil levels. The oil crankcase must be filled with approximately 15 ounces of oil. On the life and gas engine, the gear is already filled. 
but not the crankcase. On the Honda engine, both gear and crankcase must be filled before use. Next, fill with unleaded gasoline. To start the engine, the choke and throttle should be all the way to the left. Next, turn the fuel line on. On and off are clearly marked on the air filter. And lastly, turn on the red knob or the on-off switch. Adjust the choke until the engine idles correctly. Engines should always be in full throttle when raising materials. Before each use, carefully inspect all parts for wear or damage. Do not allow anyone to operate the transporter hoist who has not been thoroughly and properly trained in the correct operation and use of this hoist. Make sure to read all warning labels and call tie-down for replacements if warning labels become damaged or worn. Prior to raising the platform, remove the locking pin from the carriage and place it in the pin holder underneath. In order to raise the transporter platform, face the hoist standing as far back as possible. Place your foot on the foot control brace to engage the engine to drum belt. This permits the collapsible platform or carriage assembly to roll up the track section. When the collapsible platform or carriage reaches the top cap, release your foot immediately. This will automatically apply the self-energizing brakes. Move away from the hoist while the load is being removed from the platform or carriage assembly. To lower the empty platform or carriage assembly, first make sure there are no materials left on the carriage. Then grasp the brake handle. A feathering technique must be used. Feathering the brake involves lifting the brake handle up, which disengages the brake, and then lowering the handle, which engages the brake. Use this feathering technique multiple times as shown here to safely lower the empty, collapsible carriage. Lower the collapsible carriage to the ground at a slow speed. Use the proper tie-down equipment. If you are not securing your cargo with the proper safety straps, it could come loose during lifting, resulting in injury or death. Center flat panel loads onto the carriage and attach safety straps to slotted tie-down points. Do not hook your tie-down straps to the plywood. Straps must pass over the top. Secure your safety straps to the carriage top flat slot, head holes, and to the plywood brackets only. Check all tie-down connections. Safety straps may come loose during transport. Always check strap for damage or wear and replace when damaged or worn. Maintain a manageable speed. The wind's effects on sheets of plywood or panel goods, as well as the higher center of gravity, can make hoisting difficult and dangerous. Never apply the brake abruptly. Continue to decelerate the platform as it nears the ground to prevent damage to the collapsible platform and stop bracket. Do not use the hoist to lower materials. When you're done using the transporter and the job is complete, you can remove the engine. Before lowering the hoist, look above you to the left and right and all around to locate and identify any and all power lines before. Carefully lower the hoist, unbolt tracks, and remove slack and the cable. Make sure to pin the collapsible platform or carriage to the base section in order to prevent any movement of the platform during transport. Transporter by Tiedown Engineering is the number one selling platform hoist in the industry. Designed for the construction crew and safety in mind, it can streamline your production efforts, aid in quick and safe installation, and make your job easier. Remember, safety first. Tie Down Engineering's Transporter, a great way to get the job done.